It's now time for Trivia Tracks with yours truly, Price Robertson. This edition of Trivia Tracks is brought to you by ProMed Ambulance Services, care you can count on, and Beth Smith at Edward Jones. Edward Jones, making sense of investing, member SIPC. A central and pioneering figure of rock and roll, Buddy Holly, captured the hearts of a generation. Though his life was tragically cut short, his sound is still imitated the world over. Charles Harden Holly, that's L-E-Y at the end, was born in Lubbock, Texas on September 7, 1936. The youngest of four children, Buddy, a nickname given to him in childhood, was a straight A and B student in school. The Holly family had an interest in music. All the family members, except Lawrence O'Dell, the family patriarch, known as L.O., were able to play an instrument or sing. The elder Holly brothers performed in local talent shows. On one occasion, Buddy joined them on violin. However, Buddy decided to switch to guitar though he briefly took piano lessons at age 11. His style was influenced by gospel music, country music, and rhythm and blues acts, which he performed in Lubbock with his friends from high school. He made his first appearance on local television in 1952, and the following year he formed the group Buddy and Bob with his friend Bob Montgomery. In 1955, after opening for Elvis Presley, he decided to pursue a full-time career in music. He opened for Presley three times that year. His band style then shifted from country and western to entirely rock and roll. In October of 55, when he opened for Bill Haley and his Comets, he was spotted by Nashville scout Eddie Crandall, who helped him get a contract with Decca Records. Holly's recording sessions at Decca were produced by Owen Bradley, who had become famous for producing hits for stars like Patsy Cline. Unsatisfied with Bradley's approach, Holly went to producer Norman Petty in Clovis, New Mexico, and recorded a demo of That'll Be the Day, among other songs. Petty then became the band's manager and sent the demo to Brunswick Records, which released it as a single credited to The Crickets, which became the name of Holly's band. In September 1957, That'll Be the Day topped the charts. Its success was followed in October by another major hit, Peggy Sue. More hits followed, and Buddy Holly's career was on the rise. However, in late 1958, the Crickets disbanded, and Holly assembled a new band, consisting of future country music star Waylon Jennings on bass, famed session musician Tommy Allsup on guitar, and Carl Bunch on drums, and embarked on a tour of the Midwest. But on February 3, 1959, tragedy struck. After a show in Clear Lake, Iowa, Buddy Holly chartered an airplane to travel to his next show in Moorhead, Minnesota. Soon after takeoff, the plane crashed, killing Holly, Richie Valens, the Big Bopper, and pilot Roger Peterson in a tragedy later referred to by Don McLean as the day the music died in his song American Pie. Holly was 22 years old at the time of his death. Since then, he has been a major influence on artists such as Bob Dylan, The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Eric Clapton, and Elton John. He was among the first artists inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. Till next time, I'm Price Robertson. Amazed by today's trivia? Then join me for Trivia Tracks weekdays at 645 on Everybody's Country, Y95.